Ah, chemistry. Deadly, life-saving chemistry. It'll kill you. It'll keep you alive, sometimes at the same time. Let's talk about oxygen. We love this stuff. It keeps us alive, it's useful for fire, and it will kill you. Atomic oxygen is highly reactive and will quickly oxidize anything it comes into contact with and this is bad for you. Happily, it's so reactive that it tends to react with itself to form O2, which is what we would commonly call oxygen, and that's the stuff that we need to breathe if we wish to live. Of course, too much of anything is a bad thing, and oxygen is no exception. If the percentage of oxygen is too high for too long, it will result in things such as collapsed alveoli, detached retinas, seizures, and something called severe spasmodic vomiting, which doesn't sound too terribly nice. And that's just the safe, healthy form of oxygen known as triplet oxygen. Triplet oxygen is the most common form of oxygen, and it's what we breathe, but there's another form of molecular oxygen known as singlet oxygen, and this form is terribly bad for you. You see, singlet oxygen is highly reactive and will start destroying your lungs pretty much the instant that it gets into you. Now, if one stray molecule does happen to get into you, there will be no noticeable effect, but if you huff an entire breath of this stuff, your first thoughts will be, wow, my lungs are on fire, followed shortly by, where's the nearest hospital? Ozone is nice, since it prevents the Earth's surface from being a blighted wasteland of UV radiation. But that's really only when it's high up in the atmosphere. When it's down here on the ground, ozone is a very bad thing, causing irritation and inflammation of mucous membranes such as your lungs and your eyes. But it, along with our old friend, singlet oxygen, is used by white blood cells to kill foreign bodies such as bacteria. Damn you oxygen, you deadly life-saving oxygen. Carbon is a slut. It'll bond with anything, including our old pal oxygen. It's found in every living organism on Earth, and it goes to form over 10 million known organic compounds, which is itself a tiny fraction of the potential compounds carbon can make. Now, we clearly need carbon to live, just like we need oxygen to live, but what do you get when you combine the two together? DEATH! At least, you get death if you're an animal, like a spider, or a turtle, or a human. Or a banana. No, not if you're a banana. If you're a plant, then CO2 is just fine. And actually, I should point out that too much CO2 will harm even plants, leading to necrosis spots and DEATH! I should also point out that it isn't so much the CO2 that kills you, but the lack of oxygen that the CO2 replaces that kills you. So really, CO2 is more like the hillside strangler than Nanny Doss. Oh, that suddenly took a turn for the dark now, didn't it? Oh, salt. You used to describe the language of sailors and the good folk who happen to live in rural areas. Your name is the base of our word for salary, and we need you to live. But what are you, salt? Well, salt is made up of an explosive metal and a deadly gas. You see, sodium is an alkali metal which likes to oxidize in air and explode when you put it into water, whereas chlorine is a deadly gas which will slowly turn your lungs into bags of hydrochloric acid. When you put these two things together, you get table salt. Now this makes me wonder what happens if we add oxygen to the already heady mix of explosives and death gas. Well, what you get is bleach, which will kill you. So we go from two elements, which will cause you to explode in a cloud of acid, to a compound necessary for life, to a deadly compound that we use to make clothes look nice. Go home chemistry, you're drunk. If the elements that go into making up salt are so deadly, then why is salt necessary for life? Well, you see, chlorine is desperate for another electron, whereas alkali metals such as sodium are desperate to give their extra electron away. Thus, when they pair up, they switch over that electron and form non-reactive ions, specifically an anion of chlorine and a cation of sodium. Now that sodium is useful for several reasons, first of all, uh, allowing our nerves to send signals as well as getting our muscles to contract. Now the chlorine is useful for maintaining our acid-base uh, balance as well as some other uses such as for metabolism. Now let's talk about water. I mentioned earlier that sodium and water are rather fun if a little bit dangerous. Sodium flame. Good old water formed from that primordial element hydrogen and our good pal oxygen. Now these two elements are great at being on fire, and if you put them together you get a compound that's great at putting out fires, or starting fires in the case of alkali metals such as sodium. Now speaking of fire and water, if you get four hydrogen atoms and stuff them around a carbon atom, you get methane. Now when methane burns, it produces, you guessed it, water. Now burning hydrogen will also produce water, and unlike methane, it doesn't produce any nasty CO2. So then you may be asking yourself, What's the harm in adding an extra atom of oxygen to a molecule of water? Well, if you've been paying attention so far, you should know that adding oxygen to water will produce death, because that makes the compound hydrogen peroxide. 
Now, hydrogen peroxide is used to treat wounds, or at least it is by those who enjoy making little kids cry while watching their wounds bubble in a decidedly upsetting fashion. Ah. Unfortunately, hydrogen peroxide does little more than clean out a wound, which water also does. It has little or no antibacterial properties and may even end up damaging the tissues that you're trying to heal. So the next time somebody suggests using hydrogen peroxide on a wound, just go ahead and assume that they're evil. Or maybe they're just misinformed. I suppose that's more likely. But wait, if H2O2 is used erroneously to heal an injury, why would I make the claim that it's actually bottled death? Well, you see, the stuff that you get at the drugstore is usually a 3% solution of the stuff. Pure, or at least less dilute hydrogen peroxide, is a vigorous oxidizer, which means that it will destroy any living tissue that it comes into contact with, such as your skin. On the upside, it can be used as rocket fuel. What if you want water, just plain old water that's also deadly, and by deadly I don't mean that boring drowning sort of deadly, but deadly due to its inherent properties. It's easy, get yourself some heavy water. See, instead of regular hydrogen, heavy water makes use of heavy hydrogen, also known as deuterium. Now deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen that's got an extra neutron thrown in, making it weigh about twice as much. Okay, so you get some fat water, how is that supposed to kill you? Well, first off, it'll make you sterile since it prevents gametes from forming. Secondly, it'll kill you in a fashion similar to radiation poisoning, despite the fact that it is not itself radioactive. Now, this is quite ironic since heavy water is often used in candy reactors to keep the reactors nice and cool. Happily, you need quite a lot of heavy water in order to poison a person, so the chances of you accidentally dying from all the naturally occurring heavy water is practically nil. Nevertheless, it's water and it's deadly. Well, thank you once again for uh, taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, chemistry, it's like magic, but real.